In this video, we're going to work our way through the Create Shape Form, looking at a series of different vectors and how we can alter the settings within this form to create different shapes based on these vectors. First thing we'll need to do is open up a file to start working from. So if we go and open the existing file and navigate over to where your tutorial was installed, you'll find a file called createshapeexample.crv3d. Let's select that and click Open. Now in your 2D view, you'll see a series of five different vectors that we're going to start with. You'll also notice that in our layer menu, we have an extra layer called Blend to Inner Vectors, which we'll look at a bit later. And what we're going to do to start out with is we're going to tile our views. That way in the top, we'll see our 2D vectors or our 2D view. In the bottom, we'll see our 3D view. Now let's have a look at our Shape Creator tool. If we go to our Modeling tab, and take a look at the first row and the first icon in that row. That's our Create a Shape from Vector Outlines tool. So if we click that, up will come our Create Shape form. Now let's go over this really quickly and we'll go into these options in depth in a few seconds. So the first section we have is five different options and a way of controlling those shape profiles. We can choose to add a base height to our shape profiles if we want to. We have a way of controlling the final height of our shapes that we're going to create. We can add some tilt into our initial shape if we'd like to. We can choose how we'd like our shape to combine with other components. And we can give our shape a name if we would like to. Now to start off with, we're going to choose one of our closed vectors that we have here. And we'll choose this first one, which is a circle. And we're going to use the default settings that are already here which happened to be a curved profile with a 45 degree angle. There's no base height to start with. There's no limit to our height. We're not gonna add any tilt to that. And our combined mode will be add. And we'll give our new component a name called dome. And then we'll click apply. And you'll see right away that in our 2D view, we still have our vector selected and we have a yellow or gold bitmap representation of the 3D component that we just created. And then in our 3D view, if we take a look around, you'll see that we have an actual 3D component here. Let's look straight back down on that again. Now for now, we're gonna click apply and then close. Now in our component tree, you'll see we have a new component named dome. And in our 2D view, we still have our vector selected, but you'll see that that yellow or gold bitmap representation is now turned to a grayscale bitmap representation of our 3D component. And we can select that here. And if you do, you'll see that it's been selected in our component tree. It's also been selected in our 3D view. And I can click it again. And now I have my sizing handles and I can go ahead and I can control the size of that by using those handles. I can do that in the 2D view. I can do it in the 3D view if I'd like to. Now for this particular shape, we're going to delete it now. And there are several different ways that we can delete this component. We can right click in our 2D view and choose delete from the drop down. We can right click in our 3D view and choose delete from the drop down. We can go over to our component tree and right click on that and choose delete from that drop down. Or with that component selected anywhere, we can just press delete on our keyboard and that component will be deleted. Now let's go back into our shape creation form and see what other options we have to control the way that that dome is being made. Let's just go ahead and re-click on that and we'll reselect that circle we had a moment ago. Now you'll see that in the right hand side of the shape profile we have an angle slider and we have a field at the bottom here that we can go ahead and type in an angle if we know what it is. So for now we're just going to click apply and we'll see that we've created a dome that's set to 45 degrees. And we'll just turn that up on its edge a bit. Now we can use the slider if we'd like to, to increase the angle, or we can use the slider to decrease the angle. And we can also go into the negative if we would like to, to create more of a dish shape. Now, if we know the exact angle we'd like to, we can go ahead and type it in here. So let's say we know it's gonna be 55 degrees, press the space bar, and we'll see that we get a dome that's set to 55 degrees. Let's go ahead now and put this back to 45 and press our space bar. If I would like to add some base height to my initial component, then I can go ahead and do that by just typing in a number here. So in this case, let's put in 0.125 and press the space bar. And you'll see that I get a bit, bit of base height added to the bottom of my component. 
I can also use a slider if I'd like to. If I like to have a more of an organic feel where I can just kind of choose whatever looks good. And if I want to set it back to zero again, I can go ahead and type zero in the base height field, or I can just double click on this little tick mark here and it'll go back to zero again. Now down here when we're controlling our final height, I've set it to be no limit. So it'll grow this shape up to the 45 degrees and come back down again. Let's go ahead and turn that up a little bit more. Now let's limit our height. Now as soon as I click limit height, it picks up the dimension from down here in this field. So it will grow the shape up to 0.4 of an inch and then flatten off. And if I hover over the yellow or gold bitmap representation of the shape in the 2D view, you'll see that down here, the Z height is set to 0.4 of an inch. And I can change that if I'd like to by using the slider. Now you notice that the slider only goes up to three quarters of an inch. That's because my material thickness that I originally set up is only three quarters of an inch thick. But I can go ahead and override that if I'd like to by putting in a number larger than 0.75 if I'd like to and press the spacebar. And there we have it. So let's just go back now down to somewhere around there. Now, if I'd like to, I can scale to an exact height. So let's say I know I'd like to have my height to be exactly 0.45 of an inch. Press the space bar, and there we have it. This is actually the height that this is going to be 0.45 of an inch right in the center. Now, if I'd like to, I initially can add some tilt to my component. And to add tilt, what we're doing is we're adding in a wedge or an angled plane to the bottom of our component. It's like a base height, but with an angle to it. So let's just go ahead and turn on tilt. And to set the tilt, we need to set up two anchor points in our 2D view. So we'll click set, and we can drop one over here, our initial anchor point, let's zoom in a little bit. And then I can also put my other one over here. And you'll see that in my 3D view, I get an angled tilt plane to the bottom of my component. Now, by default, you get 10 degrees of tilt. If I want to change that to five, I can just simply type in five and then the space bar. I can also click this little down arrow and I can do it organically again and just kind of choose from the slider until I get the right amount of angle that I'd like. And then I can turn that off if I choose to. And again, I have the four different combined modes here that I can choose to set for the initial component. If I'd like to, I can always change it later, but I've got add, subtract, merge high and merge low. And then you can name your component again, whatever you'd like. Now for now, we're just gonna call this dome. And I'd like to create another component right away. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose apply and then start a new component. And I'm gonna choose this rectangle vector. And we're gonna to choose to make that a angular profile at 45 degrees. We'll just click apply so we can see what that looks like. And go ahead and make that a little less of an angle if we want to. That looks pretty good. We're not gonna give any base height. We're gonna leave the final height to no limit. We're not gonna add any tilt. But in this case, instead of leaving it as an add component, then we're gonna change that to be a merge high component. And we'll call this rectangle. And we'll click apply and then close. Now you'll see that I have those two components here in my component tree. I have the rectangle set to a merge component and the dome set to an add component. Now I can choose my rectangle component and I can drag it into my dome and you'll see what happens in my 3D view. And now it's merging in with that dome. If I look straight back down on it again, you'll see what the result is. Now I can right click on this and I can choose combine mode, add if I'd like to. And you'll see that now if I what well, we might roll up on the edge that the dome is being added to the top of my pyramid or my pyramid is pushing my dome component up a little bit on that edge. And I can right click and I can change that back to merge if I'd like to again. And then look straight down on my component again and deselect both of those and that's the result. Let's just go ahead and hold down my shift key and we're gonna select both of those and we'll press delete on our keyboard and get rid of them. Go to our 2D view, we'll press F on our keyboard to fit that to our screen. We'll make sure that we're looking straight down on our 3D view again. One more thing I'd like to point out before we move on is that 
the vector that you use to create the shape with will retain all of the parameters that you've chosen to create the last shape with. So if we go ahead and bring up our shape tool again, and I select this circle, note what happens in our create shape form. It goes ahead and picks up all the settings that we used before to create a shape with this particular vector. And that's really handy and good to know in case you need that information. I should go ahead and close that down for now. Now let's explore some of the other shape profiles that we have to work with. So let's just go ahead and select all of these by drag selecting from the right to the left and go into our shape creation tool. And let's start off with our dome shape. And we're gonna set this to be 45. And then we're gonna click apply. And we'll see that we'll have five different shapes created in our 3D view. Now we can go ahead and use the same set of parameters to look at the angular profile. And you'll see that the shapes change. It's a nice, interesting shape. And we can go ahead now and change those, that angle dynamically here, all the way up to just below 90 degrees. But you'll note as soon as we hit 90 degrees, that defaults back to 45 because a 90 degree pyramid cannot exist in our modeling environment. So we can go back down now to around 32 degrees and that's great. Let's have a look at our concave profile. Now when we click this, you're gonna note that the angle slider and the angle field is now grayed out, but we still have some of our other options that we can work with. Let's have a look at that and that's kind of an interesting shape. And we can go ahead and add a base height to that if we'd like to. Press the space bar. We can take off that base height if we'd like to, pressing zero in the space bar. We can limit that height to be 0.4 of an inch. And you'll see that it limits those heights. If any of these shapes get up to anything higher than 0.4, it will limit it to 0.4 of an inch. And you'll see that our T actually never gets up that tall. So you don't see any flat areas on our T at all. We can also scale to an exact height if we would like to. So we can scale that to let's say 0.5 of an inch, press the space bar if we'd like to. And we can also use blend to enter vectors, but we'll see that in a few minutes. We can add tilt if we'd like to across all of those, or we can change the actual combined mode if we'd like to. Let's have a look at our smooth profile. And again, you'll notice that the angle slider and this angled field is now grayed out but we can use these other options here to adjust our final height. So if we want to, we can scale those up to be one inch tall if we would like to. And you'll see this is a very interesting and pleasing shape. And if we want to, we can make a flat plane. And the only option that we have with a flat plane is we can either add tilt or we can add a base height to it. So we can add this, we can just say 0.25 and we'll get some flat planes that are 0.25 inches tall. Let's just close that down. And then we'll just select that and we can delete that. Let's go back into our shape creation tool and explore the blend to intervector option. But before we do that, we're gonna need to bring up that other layer that we looked at earlier. So let's drop this down and we are gonna hide our layer one and then we're gonna show our blend to inner vectors layer and we're gonna select that and make that our active layer and then we'll click outside of that drop down to make that manager go away. Now you see that we have some brand new vectors here to work with. Each one of them has an outside profile and an inside profile. So we've got a large circle, small circle, two different blobs. We have an egg shape and a small circle, and then a larger T shape and then the actual T shape in the middle. Let's just go and bring back up our create shape form. And starting out with the curve profile, we're gonna hold down our shift key and we'll select this outside vector and this inside vector. Now you'll see that our angle is now grayed out. We still have the option of using our base height if we want to, but we have blend to inner vector selected and we have a height set to be 0.4 of an inch. Of course, we can use this slider to change it if we would like to. We're just gonna click apply and see the results that we get. And what's neat about this shape is we have this offset flat circle and the profile shape is blending up 
from this long or wide area to this short or thin area, and we get a very interesting looking shape. So let's just go ahead and click Start a New Component, and we'll look at all of the other three sets of vectors to see what we get using those same settings. So let's hold down our Shift key and click this outside vector and inside vector and click Apply. And we'll go ahead and start a new component and we'll hold down our Shift key again and grab those two, click Apply. And well, this, this one I'd like to point out this little crease that's here. That's going to be a normal thing. And that is where your cross section actually comes together and has a bit of a pucker here. And that can easily be sculpted out or smoothed out in the end. So let's just go ahead and start a new component and we'll hold down our shift key and we'll grab these two and we'll click apply. And then we'll close that down. And you'll see that we have now four components in our component tree and they're all using that blend to inner vector. Let's go ahead and select the top one, hold down our shift key and select the bottom one and we'll delete all of those components. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our shape creation tool and we're going to explore the rest of these other shapes using this same setup that we have. So let's just go ahead and drag and select all of these different vectors and we'll click apply. And this will show us what we just saw a second ago because we're using the same curved profile. Now let's have a look at what it would be if we use the angular profile. Now let's have a look at the concave profile. Then I'll look at the smooth profile. And there we have it. You can see how blending to an inner vector will give you some nice smooth shapes. Let's go ahead and close that down. Straight back down our 3D view, and then we'll select those and take those out of there. We hope that you found this Create Shape Guide helpful when it comes to designing your own shapes to start building your own components from.